Yeah, okay, let's get started. Um, hi everyone, my name is Joe. Um, I'm a developer advocate at Dragonfly, as many of you may know. So yeah, today we're uh, having this technical workshop. We're gonna be talking about how to uh, build and scale real-time leaderboards, um, maybe for like gaming services, uh, maybe for uh, your app, you have like maybe one weekly, monthly rewards uh, for your users. It's a, it's a very common use case and popular use case that um, yeah, that you can implement uh, using Dragonfly. And uh, we're gonna, you know, go into some of the uh, details, uh, you know, the best practices and techniques um, or even more practical setups uh, in this workshop. Cool. So yeah, and as always, we do have a TLDR uh, if you don't have time for the whole session. Um, basically the gist is to use a combination of uh, sorted set and hash, right? So as we know, sorted set is an excellent choice for uh, ranking a huge number of uh, elements or users in this case. And the hash data type, on the other hand, is uh, very suitable for uh, storing the details of uh, individual users. Right? So with a combination of these two, uh, and very efficient, uh, a very efficient real-time leaderboard can be created. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the gist, uh, you know, for, for like a shorter version, right? And if you decide to stay with me for the full version of this workshop, uh, here's the agenda for today, right? For uh, the new joiners today, we're going to do a very brief introduction to Dragonfly, the project. And after that, we're going to dive into, you know, uh, some code snippets in terms of how to actually use the sort of set and hash data types to implement a leaderboard in Dragonfly. Uh, after that, next, we're going to explore more practical setups. Um, you know, maybe we will get additional requirements from the product and we'll see how we're going to deal with that. And then finally, we're going to take questions from the audience as well. Cool, next, um, yeah, so here is a very brief introduction to Dragonfly, the project, right? So uh, it is an open source uh, project available on GitHub and uh, it is uh, open sourced under the BSL license, right? So I'm not going to dive too deep into the licensing today, but the basic idea is that um, uh, you can use Dragonfly uh, for free, however you want in your system, right? As long as not offering Dragonfly uh, as a hosted service. To me, I think this is uh, very liberal because um, you know, basically you can use uh, and modify Dragonfly uh, however the way you want. And uh, yeah, I think it's a very liberal from a licensing point of view. And uh, we encourage community members to try, to try Dragonfly locally and just get started and try building try build something with it, right? So Dragonfly has gained like um, a significant traction for like the ultra high uh, throughput and uh, the you know novel uh, multi-threaded share nothing architecture, right? So on um, like an AWS instance like the C six GN sixteen X large, we're able to achieve uh, four million uh, operations per second. Uh, it is able to handle one TB in memory data. I would kind of argue that for maybe ninety or even more percent of the workloads out there, it's pretty much enough. Right? So if you have like even higher uh, requirement for for the workload, we have like our uh, clustering solution uh, in progress as well. Uh, protocol wise, Dragonfly is 100% compatible with uh, Redis and MHD. Uh, currently, we're at around like 230 commands uh, implemented for, for Redis and yeah, and all the commands from MHD. Right? So, yeah, it is very hardware efficient. It's uh, about uh, you can reduce your hardware cost to up to 50%. Right? We also have like uh, primary replica model for HA. And we have a very active community on GitHub and Discord. So yeah, feel free to uh, connect with us uh, using whatever whatever way you want, maybe GitHub issues, um, maybe check our, our roadmaps and you know talk to us, talk with the community, all the community members on Discord as well. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. That's the introduction to Dragonfly the project. So it's uh, in a thumbnail, it's a, a very um, high performance uh, dropping replacement of Redis. Right? And uh, it is able to fully utilize your multi-core uh, modern hardware uh, in, in your cloud environment. Cool, so let's, uh, let's dive in. Let's, see, let's say we're gonna, we need to build a real-time leaderboard, right? And uh, from the product, maybe what we currently have uh, is, uh, is uh, maybe, the first, uh, maybe the first draft, like the simplest requirement. Uh, we need a real-time leaderboard to show the top users with their scores, maybe in the game, maybe in your application or something, right? And we need to include some, but uh, limited details for each user because, you know, 
um, for a leaderboard, we, we don't want to show all the details of, uh, of individual users, right? So yeah, maybe something like this. I took the screenshot uh, from, from League, I think. And uh, yeah, and as you can see, each entry, um, yeah, we're showing like the, the, the top ranking uh, players over here. And for each of the user, we're showing like their avatar, um, the name, the tier scores and the win rate. So yeah, it's uh, it's some details, but not often for, for a user, right? So um, yeah, as, as a very common practice, we as also, as I mentioned before, we can use the sorted set combined with the hash data type uh, in order to achieve that, right? So we can use the sorted set to store user scores and, and their IDs um, like this. So this is an example where I'm storing like a sorted set data type under the key name uh, leaderboard user scores, right? And it is a sort of set, so it doesn't it doesn't uh, store much. It, it stores the the user ID as well as the cor corresponding score, right? So the beauty about it is that uh, whenever we modify you know any entry in this uh, in this key, uh, the order is always you know is always preserved, right? So we we keep the order. Uh, and if I do a sort of set reverse range query over here uh, with the scores, right? So this is essentially querying the top one hundred. Uh, users with their scores, and this is uh, super efficient. And then uh, we need to return, like you know, some of the user details here as well, not just the IDs, right? So uh, what we can do is that we, uh, in turn, utilize the hash data type. So for this individual user, like the IDs here, leaderboards, users one, for this individual user, we store the details of. Uh, of the user that is necessary to display in a leaderboard, right? So maybe the ID, the email, username, and maybe the avatar, right? So yeah, we, we want to keep this uh, hash data type for individual users rather small, like not too big, right? So that, uh, you know, as long as it's enough to display whatever uh, you want to show on the leaderboard, that, that should be fine, right? So by doing this and this, we can avoid, we can avoid uh, completely like sending the read, sending queries to the database because um, you know, with the ranking and the details for individual users, we, we will have like all the information we need to, to display the, the, the leaderboard. And so the rest of the work is just you know, how to make the design look nice, how to make the visual look nice for, for the leaderboard, right? Cool, so yeah, that's the gist. Uh, whenever an update is needed, uh, you know, updates, they can be done like very easily as well, right? So if we say, if we want to increase the score, uh, for this particular user one, uh, we can use the sort of set anchor by command. So this command increases uh, individual member, right, uh, in the in the sort of set. And uh, if we do so, it will return you know the new score and the order is still kept, right. So yeah, that's uh, that's uh, how easy it is to increase a score for a user. In case we want to update uh, details for a user, for instance, in this case, I'm updating uh, the avatar URL for this uh, uh, user one, right? We can use the use the h set uh, command for hash as well. You can we can do this um, this command. It, it is capable of updating uh, like one or more fields, right? And returning zero, it's indicating that this field is uh, updated successfully, but no new fields are uh, added, right? So yeah, this is how we deal with like any kind of update in the leaderboard for the ranking and for the user details as well, right? So. Yeah, though these are all like dragonfly uh, commands, right? Like the sort of set reverse range, the h get all, the sort of set anchor by, the h set, right? So let's let's take a look at uh, what it would look like uh, in code, right? So this is a uh, snippet of uh, Go code where we try to retrieve the top one hundred user, you know, just to to in order to show the top one hundred uh, leaderboard, right? So um, let's see what we have uh, in here. So uh, for the first batch of uh, pipeline commands, we have uh, yeah. Let's let's just come. Let's just count like how many uh, like commands we're gonna use uh, in order to retrieve the top 100 uh, user leaderboard, right? So in in this first batch of pipeline, we have like uh, three commands, right? We have this uh, uh, z ref range with scores. Uh, that's the same one as I shown before. This will be able to retrieve the you know top 100 uh, user IDs with their scores, right? So maybe for the current user. Uh, maybe the current user is not within the top 100, but we kind of still want to show that to the user if the user is logged in, right? So we're gonna have two additional uh, commands to read the rank and the score for the current user. So that's uh, three commands in total, right? And then if 
uh, so this top ranks is the response that we got from the first command over here, right? So it, it is basically the, the top 100 users' IDs uh, with their scores, right? So for each of them, we need to do an H get all, right? To to read the details of the of you know each of the top ranked users, right? So potentially, if we have more than 100, so potentially this is like 100 commands, right? But it sounds like a lot, right? But you know. This first part, it's uh, it's batched and pipeline. The second, you know, potentially a hundred commands. They're also batched and pipeline. So in total, we have one hundred three commands, but we have only two round trips. Right. So if we do this, uh, you know, in code, and we re we let uh, Dragonfly to handle, you know, this data, you know, the response time is still like within. I don't have a very scientific number, but something you know somewhere within like five. I don't know, milliseconds. So it's still very fast, right? It, it, it sounds like a lot, you know, one or three commands, but it's too batched pipeline. And uh, yeah, it's uh, this is, this shows like just how powerful um, like a memory data store like Dragonfly is, right? So the performance, I think it should be still like within like milliseconds range for all this. Uh, yeah, maybe even under like one millisecond, I'm not sure, but uh, it also depends on the network, but uh, yeah, the. It's 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 nothing like it's just like two gigantic commands for 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 dragonfly like not even gigantic it's just like two commands right cool so this is what uh, we would uh, what it would look like when when it's uh, built in code and uh, yeah let's see if we have uh, any questions so far but uh, that's pretty much uh, uh, the gist I'm showing yeah let's recap so what we want to build is a little bit like this right so we can use the Z reference to read the top IDs with their scores. And in turn, for each of these IDs, we use the H get all to read the details, right? And this is how we handle uh, updates. And in code, this is what it will look like. And uh, we use a pipeline to save a whole bunch of the network uh, latencies, right? Cool. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's, uh, that's it for a, a basic setup, right? So yeah, as you can see, uh, it's basically a combination of uh, sort of set and hash. Cool. Now we have probably like a more practical setup. Um, maybe we get uh, some updates from the product. Right? So maybe in this scenario, we need two leaderboards now, right? So we need one that shows the top users of the current week. Um, sometimes you use month, but let's say we use uh, we use uh, weekly rankings, right? So we show the top users of the current week, and we need another leaderboard to show the top users of all time, right? So yeah, this is, a, this is a refined requirement from the product and let's see what we can do. So we haven't talked about uh, database yet, right? So uh, yeah, it is true that Dragonfly, it is a multi-model, multi-paradigm uh, in-memory store. Uh, Dragonfly has uh, JSON support as well. And we also just released uh, the search, uh, Dragonfly search in beta yesterday. So secondary indexes are possible as well, right? So yeah, Dragonfly is like quite uh, flexible and versatile. But realistically speaking, uh, at uh, its core, I would say that Dragonfly is still a memory first data store, right? So we do provide a snapshot mechanism, which can write your the data on disk, but it is a me mechanism for backup, right? So I would uh, argue that, um, you know, reali realistic, realistically speaking, Dragonfly at its core is still like a memory first uh, store. So maybe we still need to uh, write this information somewhere uh, made in the SQL database. Uh, so that is on disk for, for, for the users, right? So I have a simple table over here, which is like the user scores table. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the core here is the total score field, which record uh, the total score um, of a user of all time, right? So, yeah, and uh, it's obviously referencing the, the user's table and, you know, we have like constraint and time and everything, but, you know, at its core, we just want to uh, record the total score for each user, right? So yeah, so with that, we are able to, we are confident that, oh, we, we have we have the total score of each user uh, written somewhere on disk, right? So um, yeah, so we can still use our existing, uh, you know, the data type schema in Dragonfly to make this all time leaderboard also real time as well, right? So what we have before, we have a key called um, leaderboard user scores, which is a sort of set, right? Since we have this new requirement, so we, let's say we don't use that anymore. Instead, we have uh, two new sort of set keys for ranking, right? One is for uh, all time, and the other is for maybe the current week, right? So the current week is uh, the week of uh, 2023, December the, th uh, the third, right? So it's this week. 
Right? So with this new setup, let's see uh, what we do when there's a, when there's a score increase, there's an update, right? So we need to do three things. We need to update the weekly uh, sort of set, which is this one. We need to update the all time sort of set as well, which is this one. And finally, maybe we want to uh, you know update the total score for the user in database as well, right? So uh, yeah, let's not uh, talk about uh, you know data consistency uh, for now, but basically these are the three steps we need to do. Right, and for this, particularly for this uh, weekly sort of set, right? So maybe we can give it an expiry date. Maybe you know, sometime next week. Maybe Tuesday, Wednesday next week, right? So it can be like automatically expired, you know, after the current week, right? We also don't need to create a new sort of set like for every week, right? So because all we need in code is just a function that uh, compute the start state of the current week based on the current timestamp, right? Because when we have a function like that, and we just do like maybe z, z incur by uh, the commands, it will right. So let's imagine we 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 are at the current week, right? So all the score increases will be recorded here. Right? Imagine we jump into next week, right? As long as we have a function that computes the date, uh, you know, computes from a date to the to the you know current week starting date. When we jump into the next week, the sort of set key for the, for next week would be created as well automatically. Right, using using the the dragonfly commands, right? So yeah, it's a, it's a very nice setup. You know, as the time uh, progresses, the the current week, uh, the the sort of set key for the current week is created automatically, right? And for the previous week, it will be automatically expired, right? So yeah, and then for this all time ranking, maybe some players they don't they don't some users they don't use they don't play this uh, game anymore. They don't use this um, uh, application anymore. Right, so sometimes some of them they will eventually become like lower ranking users, right? So this key can potentially become a big key because it captures the 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 you know the all time user rankings, right? So depending on the use case, maybe we want to maybe we always want to only show the top one hundred, maybe the top one thousand, right? So periodically we should uh, clean up some of the lower ranked users from this all time uh, sort of set as well. And a nice thing is that you know the user detailed uh, hash keys they can be shared across um, you know across different uh, uh, sort of set right because these are the same um, the sort of set they store the same thing uh, user ID and their ranks you know but the and their scores but the scores are different for all time and for current week right but the user ID is the same and they can always reference back to these hash keys uh, if if we want to retrieve the user details. So by doing this, so by doing this, we make our all-time uh, leaderboard uh, also real-time, right? So what I mean by that is that whenever an increase is is like an increase happens, we do the three updates, right? And then a second a second query comes in, uh, you know, no matter if it's a weekly uh, for the current week or it's an all-time, right? All the data will be served directly from Dragonfly. So again, for the uh, reading queries. Uh, they 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 don't go to the database, right? The database is just there, you know, as probably as a source of truth. If there's something uh, inconsistent happen, we just uh, we just rely on that, right? But for for essentially for updating and for reading, uh, it, the operations on Dragonfly is uh, super fast, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's still real time for the all time because we read this key, the top 100 from this key, and then the corresponding user details. It's all served by Dragonfly. Cool. So yeah, that's a, like probably a more realistic, uh, more practical setup. Uh, we have weekly and all time. And then maybe we have uh, like additional requirement from the product where uh, instead of just the current week and all time, we want to show leaderboards for previous weeks as well. Right? So maybe we want to send rewards to users based on the previous week. Right? And the previous week leaderboard uh, can be like a hotspot, can be a hot data uh, in this case. So let's see what we can do, um, right? Again, from a database uh, persistence per perspective, maybe we want to record uh, each individual score transactions for, for the user as well, right? So for uh, a specific user um, at this time, like how many scores uh, you like is added for this user and what's the reason for, for, for this, uh, for this uh, score uh, addition or transaction, right? So, Maybe yeah, maybe we have we can have a second table to record the score transaction. And remember, we do have this one to capture the total score uh, of each of uh, each user, right? 
So if we have this table, then in order to compute the you know leaderboard for previous weeks, it's rather e it's rather easy, right? We can we can probably utilize something like a materialized view based on this table, right? For instance, we can create a materialized view um, called leaderboard week of uh, last week, and uh, we rely on the user score transactions table, right? And we give it a proper uh, timestamps. Uh, we give it proper timestamps for the for the range of the weekdays, right? So yeah, and we also directly order, uh, you know, order the result uh, for the materialized view. So once we do that, the because the data is static, like no one can go back in time and get their scores increased again, right? So after this materialized view is created, it's it's static; it won't change anymore, and um, we don't have to do the operation, the refresh operation for this uh, materialized view as well, right? So yeah, with this setup, we can uh, have previous week leaderboards uh, based on the database. Then the problem is we just need to cache it, right? So since this result is quite static, uh, we don't even want to bother, you know, uh, retain the orders and everything uh, in Dragonfly. Right? Instead, maybe we can just uh, cache the top 100 from this materialized view as a blob, as a string, maybe as JSON as well. But you know, the idea is that uh, we don't we don't need to uh, order it. You know, in real time anymore. We just need to cache it, right? So if we were to cache the materialized view uh, in Dragonfly, um, there are potentially like uh, two problems like uh, we need to pay attention to, right? So the first is uh, uh, cache penetration, right? So we definitely we definitely need to validate the input. Right? For instance, if uh, if a user or if a, if an attacker sends a request saying something like a week of, uh, you know, a week of today, but today is not a start is not a valid start of a week, right? So this uh, so we won't be able to have a materialized view in the database, right? So yeah, we definitely need to validate the, the input first before we send the query to, to Dragonfly or to the database. And uh, uh, the second problem is more, uh, I think it's more like interesting and relevant in this case, which is uh, the cache breakdown, right? Because, you know, imagine we do need to send out rewards for uh, to users for the past week, right? Then the past week uh, leaderboard is gonna be uh, like a hotspot data. Right. In that case, uh, we obviously want to cache the, the result of the last week leaderboard, uh, you know, in Dragonfly. So it's directly served from the memory. And uh, yeah, and it also it doesn't change. We don't have to worry about um, update or anything. But what if the, you know, what if the key in Dragonfly for, for the past week leaderboard uh, expires, right? So if that's the case, and because it's a hot data, because everybody's checking their past week, you know, scores to, to know that, oh, am I getting reward or anything, right? Because of this, right? If we have the, the key for the for the past week, for the last week leaderboard expired, then we could potentially have like highly concurrent queries directly sent to, to the database, right? So this can add a lot of uh, stress to the database. So this is kind of what we want to avoid, right? So in order to avoid that, we can use the refresh ahead, refresh ahead caching strategy. Uh, for this, right? So what happens is that, uh, you know, let's imagine that we cache the last week leaderboard in Dragonfly for 100 seconds, right? And we can choose the refresh ahead factor, let's say 50%, right? That means if the data is queried before the fifth second, you know, we just return from, from the cache, from Dragonfly. If the data is queried after the fifth second, right? So yeah, the same cache data will be returned, but uh, we, we spawn like a back, background worker or something equivalent to trigger the, the 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 data refresh, so basically we just uh, you know we just in this case we can probably just refresh the uh, the expiration date, but you know in a general case we probably uh, need to read that from the database again and uh, cache that part of data into Dragonfly again, right? So it's important to ensure that only one background worker is able to refresh the data, right? Because otherwise you know it's the same load like if we if we if we cannot ensure that only one background worker is doing that then this will still happen right it will, it will add stress uh, you know to the database right so this is uh, this is crucial so when that's the case right dragonfly can help with this case as well right we can in that, if that's the case dragonfly can can be used as a distributed lock you know in order to allow only one background worker to perform the the refresh data process Right. And then, then, then the rest uh, of the background worker, they just know that they didn't acquire the log successfully and they just return, uh, you know, uh, without refreshing. So yeah, that's the, the, the idea. So we can implement that by, you know, 
by doing by just by using the set and next command, you know, as a as a locking mechanism, where imagine imagine the high concurrency uh, happens, right? And say each of the requests they will try to spawn like one worker to do the refresh as well, right? So then the workers are many of them they're trying to do the refresh, but before they do the refresh, they need to do this uh, set, uh, you know, lock refresh key. If it doesn't exist, uh, maybe have an expiration for five seconds, right? So by doing this, we will have like all the workers fail to acquire the lock, they will just return. They just don't do anything, right? Only one of them, they will be able to, it will be able to acquire the lock. And then this, this single worker will be able to read again from the database and then refresh the cache in Dragonfly, right? So yeah, this this part actually, we, we do have like examples in our uh, Dragonfly examples uh, repository, right? So we have a, a cache refresh ahead strategy uh, also implemented in Go. Um, yeah, this portion, which basically uh, implements what I uh, described over here. Cool, so with this, we are able to support, you know, the scenario from from the, the requirement from product, right? We, we are able to support uh, a little bit for current week. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a purely uh, um, in-memory operation in Dragonfly. We're able to support the leaderboard for all time, right? Where the source of choose is in the database user scores table, right? And it's it's cached and using sorted set and hash. We'll also be able to support um, previous week, which is uh, which is uh, a materialized to your leaderboard, right? And it's also cached in Dragonfly. So with these all three scenarios, as you can see, uh, Dragonfly can pay, play a significant role uh, in these scenarios in order to you know, make sure that your leaderboard is like blazingly fast uh, in terms of uh, querying speed, right? So yeah, well, while using Dragonfly, we have uh, like this uh, following advantages in order to make your leaderboard better, right? First of all, uh, the sorted set. Dragonfly has a, a different implementation for sorted set and uh, memory wise, it's uh, up to 35% less uh, compared with uh, Redis. And it's also two to three more uh, CPU efficient as well for the Dragonfly uh, sort of set implementation. And big keys, we have uh, blogs about big keys as well. So big keys are generally not a huge problem uh, for Dragonfly. Although I wouldn't recommend, you know, you know, you to spoil uh, Dragonfly uh, with, uh, you know, with a lot of big keys. It's not a good practice, but uh, from time to time, if you happen to have big keys in there, normally it's not a huge problem. And overall, Dragonfly is uh, is more memory efficient. We we have like up to thirty percent uh, less memory usage in compared with uh, Redis. And as mentioned before, we have uh, very high throughput. And since a single Dragonfly instance is able to push your hardware to its limit on a more than uh, multi-core machine, so it's uh, it's a simpler de uh, deployment as well. Right. So what we haven't covered in this uh, in this uh, presentation is first uh, pagination. Uh, the sort of set uh, reference command, it support start and end, right? You remember I was doing 0 0.99, but you know, you can change the start and end parameters as well. So it's similar to the database offset limit. So it's not a perfect pagination in comparison with uh, say a cursor based, right? but uh, we can totally do that. And then secondly, we've mentioned this, but we kind of you know avoided it, which is about uh, data consistency, right? So um, in case multiple operations are sent to Dragonfly, uh, in, in our case, we're using like pipeline. So most of the time should be fine. But if you need like more, uh, you know, careful updates or whatever, uh, the the Dragonfly uh, watch multi execution transactions can be used as well. And, and obviously for database operations, we, we recommend using uh, transactions. For instance, when we want to update the user total score and add one entry of the user score transaction, right? We want them to happen uh, in the database transaction. So for operations like what we saw uh, earlier uh, when they sent uh, both to Dragonfly and the database, it's uh, so it's two separate system, right? So it would be uh, rather harder to make sure that it's always consistent, right? Um, without like a huge performance penalty, right? So there are ways like um, maybe two-phase commit, maybe using like a transactional uh, message uh, in an MQ, you know, in order to make sure that uh, the data on two systems are consistent as possible, right? But it's about trade-off, right? I, I would argue that in this case, uh, as long, because it's a leaderboard, and um, um, I would argue that, you know, for, for this case, making sure the data is consistent in a database uh, is enough because uh, if we made a mistake in Dragonfly, we can always uh, reconcile 
what we have in the database, right? In order to in order to uh, update the in-memory version, right? And let's say we want to send out rewards to users. That's probably more important, you know, to be consistent. But it will be always based on the past week leaderboard where the materialized view uh, is used, right? So as long as we make sure that the operations in the in the database is consistent, I think we're fine for for this for this particular use case. And on the Dragonfly end, yeah, it's sitting there, uh, you know, s serving all your uh, leaderboard queries like super fast for 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 many users around the world, right? Cool. So yeah, that's it. That's it for for today. We do have, as I mentioned, we have like a Dragonfly examples repository. So uh, the ref refresh ahead strategy uh, is implemented in this uh, you know sub directory, right? For the leaderboard, uh, we have a sub repo as well, um, but currently uh, it only contains the code for. Uh, the current week, so you know the pure dragonfly part. Uh, in the near future, uh, we may we may update this to you know match what we have in this demo. So it's more uh, realistic, where uh, it supports the current week, the all time, and the past week leaderboards. Uh, you know, all in this. Uh, it's currently not, but uh, you know, in the near future, we'll update this repo to reflect to reflect that. Right. Cool. So yeah, thank you, thank you so much. That's uh, that's the the that's what I have for today. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be taking questions if you have any and uh, let's see how it goes from there yeah we have a question about um, uh, the licensing yeah we we got that every time so let's take a look you know together or not right so for dragonfly we have uh, BSL so basically uh, what it says is that uh, you can do you can use dragonfly whatever you want but we cannot uh, you cannot host it as a uh, service to a user, which means that the key space of Dragonfly, uh, it can only be controlled by you, but not your user. Right? And on March 15, 2028, this license will be converted to Apache v2. So yeah, so this is uh, this is what we have. Um, why why doing this? I, I think one of the reasons is that uh, Dragonfly is, uh, is open source and liberal, um, but in the meantime, uh, Dragonfly, we, as a company, we're also building like uh, a uh, cloud version uh, of the of the of the offering. Right, so it's the same functionality, same core uh, code that uh, Dragonfly has, right? But uh, we're trying to build a very uh, smooth and um, fast cloud experience for for you. So yeah, that's why that's why we have that. And uh, yes, you are always welcome to uh, connect with us in our Discord. If you have any questions using the community version, uh, don't please don't be hesitated to ask us questions on Discord issues. Uh, I'm there as well. Many of the uh, team members and community members are there as well. Uh, yeah, and if you're like interested in the cloud uh, offering I just mentioned, you can also come to our homepage and hit the Dragonfly Cloud button, where we are currently onboarding our uh, customers on a waitlist basis. Right, so. Uh, yeah, but uh, it will be uh, ready. It will be like open to everyone soon, I would say. And uh, if you're interested in any of this, please, uh, please let us know and uh, maybe fill out the form as well. Questions about uh, pipeline. So what's the difference between uh, pipeline and transaction? Cool, uh, that's a good question. Uh, let's head back to one of the slides over here. So um, pipeline, is just the way that you batch commands, right? So um, in this case, we we are doing like all these commands are read, right? So we probably don't care about you know the so-called consistency uh, here, right? But we are batching the commands so that uh, this three commands is sent over to Dragonfly, you know, using one run trip, and this potentially one hundred commands are sent to Dragonfly, uh, you know. As a batch, so basically, it they they it just the pipeline. It saves the the round trip, saves the you know the, the network information exchange. So yeah, that's uh, that's what pipeline is. And as for for uh, transaction, it's uh, it's more complicated than than pipeline, right? So it, what you can do is that you uh, like use the watch commands. You watch uh, certain keys in Dragonfly, right? And then you do a bunch of maybe read and write commands, right? So it's like an optimistic logging mechanism. Right, so it's uh, that's that's the difference. Although, like the let's see if I can find the uh, documentation here, maybe generic. Yeah. So this is uh, what we have to to support, uh, like a transaction style. 
execution in Dragonfly, right? And uh, they can be pipelined and batched as well. So that's the difference. One is for saving network round trip and the other is for uh, consistency. So the question is about uh, uh, Dragonfly search. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, that's a good question as well. It's about Dragonfly search. Um, yeah, in this presentation, I didn't uh, touch uh, search because uh, you know it's not part of the presentation, but we do have a, a Dragonfly search uh, office hour uh, next week. And uh, our CTO Roman and uh, the developer Vlad who you know worked uh, very uh, diligently on this uh, uh, feature uh, and myself, uh, we're all gonna be there. So if you're interested, uh, please register to this office hour next week where we're gonna be talking about uh, Dragonfly search. But uh, if you wanna try it out today, so it's, uh, it's released in beta yesterday, right? So the documentation is being updated to reflect that as well. Currently we have these core commands. Um, I would say create and search are the most uh, important commands in this, uh, in this category. And uh, if you're using the newest version of Dragonfly uh, 1.13, you are able to try out these features, right? So currently well, what we have, we have, we can search by term, we can search by text, and we also support uh, Victor similarity search. Uh, yes, please. So please give it a shot if you're interested and uh, definitely come to the office hour next week uh, where we're going to be uh, diving deep, deeper into the search functionalities and examples. We're going to be using OpenAI, OpenAI embedding as well. Yeah, hope, hope I see you there next week as well. Question about the code sample and uh, the blogs. Yes, so uh, thank you again. It's a great question. Uh, as I mentioned, we have like uh, multiple examples in here under the Dragonfly examples repository and you're welcome to contribute to this as well or maybe you know the documentation maybe dragonfly core uh, whichever is more comfortable for you so in this examples repo we have a bunch of them we have like um you know like this one it's using it's creating a cache but using the hottest javascript ecosystem like bun right uh, as i mentioned we have this uh, refresh ahead strategy i think it's a good one and it's probably easier to implement in go than the other languages because of go routine right we also have this leaderboard which covers the current week uh, leaderboard. We're going to be updating this subdirectory for uh, all time leaderboard and past week leaderboard as well. So, yeah, feel free to take a look. And uh, uh, blog wise, uh, let's say this, uh, this image, I, I took it from uh, one of our blogs. So, we have a bunch of uh, uh, announcement, engineering, and open source related blogs uh, on our page as well. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in a specific topic, uh, I, I think it's very likely you can you can find uh, uh, one in here. And if you have uh, specific questions, you can also you know join us with, uh, in Discord, GitHub, and uh, maybe sign up for the newsletter. Uh, yeah, the the whole idea I think for uh, an open source project like Dragonfly is to you know stay connected with the community. Uh, personally, what I do I do a lot of uh, I um, I star a lot of uh, you know interesting project and I watch them for the releases. So whenever I get a release email, it's probably just reminding myself to, to go check check out that people again, see what's going on, right? So, yeah. Cool, let's see. Um, yeah, I don't see more questions coming in. And uh, I guess uh, some of you are shy, but you know, don't worry. Uh, please, uh, please join our community and stay connected. Um, yeah, I guess other than that, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining. Take care, have a great one.